All right, grab your popcorn, nerds. We're gonna talk about Game of Thrones today. Today, I'm I'm eating pretzel M M&M and M popcorn. We're gonna go ahead and review that. We're gonna go ahead and review Game of Thrones season eight. Was it really that bad? Four years later, we're gonna go ahead and dive into it. But Eric, how are you doing? And what are you reviewing for us today? Uh, I'm doing good. You know, it was a very enthusiastic intro. I almost blew out my laptop speakers. Um, when it comes to food, I, I don't exactly have much. Um, I, I'm in a frat house right now. There, there appears to be this um what looks to be weeks old um Dunkin' bacon egg and cheese or something it's all it's part of the i won't be touching it <laughs> it's it's currently 3 32 in the afternoon on a monday i have some bud light seltzers um this is the last of the black cherry ones i'll be moving on to i think mango next so i'll have two reviews for you depending on how quickly i drink oh <laughs> no i just spilled all my m&ms <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. But let's dive into it. Let's talk about Game of Thrones season eight because you just finished watching it for the first time. I have watched the show twice all the way through, seeing the ending twice, of course, and I hated it pretty much both times equally. I did not like the ending of that show whatsoever, but let's go ahead and dive into the nitty gritty of why it failed. And for me, it's because of who took the throne. Bran the Broken, are we serious right now? So here's my big thing with season eight. A lot of fans hate that Daenerys just had the snap and turns and becomes the Mad Queen. I don't mind that. I think it made sense. And the reason it makes sense is because there's that one scene where she's in the room strategizing on the dragon table or whatever. And the old grandma tells her, be a dragon or be a wolf. She says some weird ass stuff to her and is like, snap, basically be evil, break the wheel. So she goes and she does that. And it made sense to me. But what didn't make sense to me is Jon Snow not taking the throne. And I know you disagree with me, Eric, but Jon Snow, the reluctant, I don't want to be the leader, but is the clear and obvious best leader in the entire freaking show. He says, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to kill Danny. I love Danny. And then he goes and he kills Danny. So you think, oh, he's going to become the leader. Now he's going to take the throne. He's the rightful heir because he's really a Targaryen. And then he just goes, nah, I'm OK. That never made sense to me. So you disagree with me. You're fine with him not taking the throne. But I thought the season worked if he took the throne. And the fact that he didn't take the throne ruined the entire experience for me. Yeah, I mean, I, at this point, I'm like, I, I don't know who I wanted to take the throne at the end. Obviously, I'm I'm pissed that it was Bran. Bran did nothing the entire show except fall out of a tower and then get dragged around by Hodor. Like... He has no political experience. He was the um, the Lord of Winterfell for like two episodes before he decided to just head north to become the Three-Eyed Raven, which I still don't really understand the purpose of, really. <laughs> um, he didn't do anything with it. Um, but I- I'm completely okay with Jon Snow not ending up on the Iron Throne. Um, like, you know, he-, he-, he is a good leader. I-, I can't deny that. He was the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Um, but he was also murdered for it because of the way he handled things. And, you know, you could make the argument that like, yes, um, he, he's good at bringing people together. He made like the first friendly relations between the North and the people beyond the wall, the wildlings, um, like ever, but he has like very little political experience. Um, and like, he, he says that he, he doesn't want it, you know, throughout the entirety of season seven and season eight. Like, every other line that he has is, I don't want the throne. But, like, like I get it. It should have been him. He's the the rightful heir. I feel like it doesn't fit him. He's he's not a king. He's a warrior. And, yeah, he's a leader, but he's not a leader of the Seven Kingdoms. He's, like, a leader on the battlefield. I feel like, um, like, I I am upset the fact that by the end of the show, Jon Snow was sent back to the Wall, going to live with the Wildlings in the North. But... I, I don't think he should have been king either. If I were to rewrite the ending, I would probably have Jon Snow fill in as Jamie Lannister's role and be like the head of the night, um, not the Night's Watch, the um, King's Guard. So I could see that working out where he becomes king of the, of the Night's Guard. But again, it's just, it, it's the fact that he is a Targaryen that really sticks out like a sore thumb because the whole question throughout the entirety of the show is who is Jon Snow's you know true father true mother like what is his 
real heritage. You know, where does he come from? Who is the mom? Then we finally find out it's the big reveal. It's like mind blowing. Like, oh my God, he's a Targaryen. So he's technically the heir to the throne. And then it just doesn't happen. And it doesn't make sense why they set that up. This huge plot point, mind blowing plot point, and then did nothing with it ultimately. And we could talk endlessly about season eight and all the flaws of it. And I want to dive into the, the long night, right? Because First of all, you can't see what the hell is going on because it was so poorly shot and it was so freaking dark. Second of all, all those years and years and years of anticipation for the Night King to come wreck wreck things and kill everybody. And then he dies in an episode, basically. And it felt very anticlimactic. Nobody really died. You thought I thought there would be like major characters killed off. Like you could see John or uh Sansa or Arya die in this battle pretty much everyone goes unscathed except for Jor- Jorah Mormont and that was an anticlimactic death in its own right I don't know the long night you liked it I think that it was anticlimactic I thought it was probably the better the highlight of the season in a way but at the same time it was just the whole thing felt rushed to me yeah I mean I just want to clarify like, I liked it but I do think that it it did have the potential to be like astronomically better than it was. As you mentioned, it was it was way too dark. Um, I know we were chatting right before this. We're like, I watched it during the daytime. Um, my room is really really bad at um staying dark. I had all my lights off, the blinds shut, but my room was still bright as hell. I had to sit like 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 this to like see what the hell was going on. And you know, when everyone's in armor and it's dark, I don't know who the hell it is. Like. At the end of the episode, I literally had to look up like every death in that episode just to confirm who actually died. And and you're absolutely right where um, not that many people died. I think one of the most amazing things about Game of Thrones, the, the entire thing was that nobody was safe. You know, at any point in time, like anyone could die. They killed off the main character, Ned Stark, in like season one. And then they gave us a new hero in Rob Stark who died in like the craziest episode in like television history. And then after that, um, the, the long night, it it like low key kind of felt like a Marvel movie where it was like so much like cliche deus ex machina type stuff where like the, like the the thing that made me the most mad about the episode was Theon's death where first of all, I hate Theon reek was better, (laughs) but like they're using Bran as bait for a reason I still don't fully comprehend, you know, he was the three eyed Raven. I, I don't know what the hell that even means still. He can see things, but why does that mean that the night King wants him? Um, so then Theon's protecting him. Everyone dies besides Theon call that plot armor. Um, and then for some reason, when they're surrounded and the night King is there, Theon's like, I guess I'll die now. And then just charges at the night King and gets like killed. So then it's just Bran surrounded by the Night King and like 50 or so like zombie soldiers. And then all of a sudden, Arya out of nowhere from the skies kills him. Like how? How? Like did she use like the, the God of many faces to like pretend to be a soldier and like sneak in? Like, I don't know. We didn't see it. I don't know. Bad. She was just sneaky. She was just sneaky. She but we didn't see it through just, the dark and then just jumped out of nowhere and she killed him. I would have liked to see it though. It's just like, I'm just standing there. I'm like, how is this going to end? And all of a sudden just Aria just flying in, which that's another thing. You know, if you're going to build up a battle for seven seasons, eight seasons, um, I, I'm okay with it being only one episode, but like if there, there was only one character that actually truly cared about this war and prepped for everything. And that was Jon Snow. So to have Jon Snow be like, actually the most useless character throughout this entire episode um that again that's bad writing why why is it aria that does it why was Jon snow spending the entire episode hold on i know you want to say something but i just got to get this off my chest real quick the battle was like actually kind of bad at the beginning where for some reason right the the fire lady walks in gives all the dothraki flaming swords and then they all just charge in and die (laughs) I'm like, why? Yes. And then somehow Jorah is the only character that returns from that plot armor. Um, meanwhile, 
John and Daenerys are just sitting on the top of a mountain on their dragons, not doing anything. And it takes like 45 minutes for them to be like, oh, shit, we have dragons and then go in. <laughs> <laughs> OK, as stupid as those things were, let's talk about the stupidest thing to ever happen in the entirety of the show. Tyrion is always the clever, smart one. He always is a step ahead of everybody, right? So why the hell was it his idea to put everybody in the crypt when they're facing an army of undead? Undead, and they go to where the dead bodies are. Think about that logic. They hid all of the women and children in the crypt where all of the dead bodies lie. And now you have the Night King who can raise dead bodies from the ground to kill people. That's where they decide to hide? That was by far the stupidest plot point, the stupidest development in the entire show, and it pissed me off to no end. So I actually, I don't know if this is true or not, because um, I haven't read that much about like the lore and everything. Again, I just literally finished the show for the first time a few days ago, but it is fresh in my mind that one episode in, I think it was season eight or maybe late seven, where they put together that ragtag group of fucking characters to go beyond the wall, to capture one of the soldiers of the army of the dead, to bring it to Cersei to like prove that this is actually a real <laughs> thing. And they're all right. surrounded, they're fighting, blah, blah, blah. And Jon Snow kills like one of like the head, I, I don't even know how to term this, one of like the head guys in the army. And then as soon as Jon kills him, all of the other zombies just like fall to the ground dead. And then they're like, oh, why did they all just die? And then John's like, well, maybe he's the one that turned them into zombies or something like that. So I guess if there's no confirmation that that's actually true, I guess it is confirmed because when Arya kills the Night King, they all die. So maybe in, in order for the Night King to bring bodies back to life, they had to have been killed by a White Walker, which is then explains why the people in the crypt didn't die. I don't know. It's like it's getting like really complicated yeah, and sticky. Right. But then that's another plot hole in itself because like the Stark lady that was in there, she wasn't killed by a White Walker, I, I don't believe. And I, I'm pretty sure that most of the people in the crypt weren't killed by White Walkers, but still the white the Night King can just raise them from the dead. So I don't know. It didn't make any freaking sense at all that that happened. And it was just so plainly stupid to me. I just, that was like the dumbest moment in the entire show in my eyes. And again, that's, it has a lot of competition in the season because you also have Cersei and Jamie dying by rocks falling on their head. That was pretty stupid as well. And that cringy battle between Jamie and what's his name? The, the Greyjoy, the dialogue from the Greyjoy, man, I can't remember his name. But it made me want to throw up in my mouth and spit it upon my food because he is just horrible to listen to speak. And then that battle sucked. You think that Jamie's dead. Somehow he's the fucking Terminator. But then he goes into <laughs> into the castle and dies anyway. I, there's just so many things that in a show that was so perfect because it made so much sense at every turn and everything was so neatly wrapped together. In this season, nothing made sense like that. And it all just fell apart. And there were so many plot holes and illogical mistakes. And that's where the question of the episode, was the season that bad? Yeah, it kind of was. It really just was a severe drop off in quality. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Um, you know, throughout the first six seasons, it's like everything made sense. You know, it was like one event led to another and like it all flowed very cohesively. You know, it felt like almost like real life where like something happens and then it causes like a chain of events that the characters have to deal with you know and then as soon as you hit season eight it's just like things were just happening left and right and then it like it left you thinking like wait why is this happening why is this character doing this and like there's very little explanation to be offered you know where it's like i think you mentioned jamie you know jamie had one of the best character arcs at the show in my opinion where he starts off, he's like not a good guy. He's just your stereotypical Lannister. Um, he pushes Bran out of the tower, and you know he's hooking up with his sister. And then he gets captured by Rob Stark, and then he meets up with Brienne, and he goes on this long journey of like growth and development. And you start to sympathize with him. You learn about the true story of why he's known as the Kingslayer, why he really killed the king. And then all of a sudden, in season eight, he's just like he doesn't really care anymore. He's just like doing things 
And then he finally does like what I, I would assume most people wanted. It's what I wanted. He finally admitted feelings for Brienne. They hook up. But then he immediately is just like, I'm going to go. And then he goes back to his sister and then just was like, I still love you. And then they just die. And I'm, I was like, oh, you know, I, I, I expected more. I think that's the biggest thing with the ending of Game of Thrones. You know, it's like it's, it's a whole series of build up and build up and build up for just like nothing to happen. Right. It was like you expected things to happen and the writers knew that and they just wanted to subvert expectations. So they were like, what's the most left field, like out of left field thing that we can think of to totally ruin this moment for the fans? Let's do that. That's yeah. what they did, essentially. And, you know, Game of Thrones has been out for a while. Um, I, I knew about it. I knew everyone loved the show, but I, I never decided to watch it. And I, I didn't for two things. Um, one was because... In my mind, I always thought that Jon Snow dying and then coming back to life was like the biggest like plot twist in the show. Turns out it like it wasn't, but that was like in my mind. I was like, why would I watch it if I already know that he's gonna come back? Which is, that's a whole other problem. Like, why did it only take Jon Snow like an episode to come back? That should have been like a whole plot season long thing. Um, but then I also knew that the last season was really bad and the ending was terrible. So I was always like, why am I gonna waste my time? watching seven seasons of a really good show just to be just to know that i was going to be really disappointed by the ending so that's why it took me so long to watch it but eventually i was like it might be worth it to watch it and it was i loved this show it was very very good but like the ending was like really 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 bad yeah it was a really bad ending and i'm glad that you brought up the Jon snow thing because i think that moment had such major negative ramifications on the show because to that point everyone that died died like that was it they all stayed dead death was a real consequence every every action that the characters made had a consequence there was cause and effect to everything and oftentimes it got them killed like if rob stark would have married that girl and just moved on and lived happily ever after it would have defeated the purpose of the show, action and consequence. But it didn't happen. He died. Everyone dies in the Red Wedding. But then Jon Snow dies, and he comes back to life the very next episode, pretty much. Yeah. That killed the whole cause and effect and the whole, like, the stakes of everything in the show. And that's when I think the quality started to drop off and everything just became whatever the plot dictates with the plot armor. Yeah, so I'm like 50-50 on it. Because, I mean, as we all know, um, Game of Thrones is based on the books. There are only, I think, five books out. And from what I understand is the last book that has currently been written, it ends with Jon Snow's death. So novel-wise, we don't know what happens with Jon Snow. Um, but what I do know is that throughout the books, there is a, like, it's extremely obvious that Jon Snow is a Targaryen. Like, throughout the show, it's not really apparent or obvious or anything. Um, and then until it, like, is revealed late, late, late in the show. But my friend who has read the books is like, yeah, it's like, and if you read the books, like, you see it coming from, like, book one. So in my mind, now I'm thinking, like, if they're going to hint at that and set that up in the books that Jon Snow is a Targaryen, and then you kill him off at the end of the most recent book. It's like, it, would he actually have stayed dead? Like, is the writer planning on bringing him back? You know, um, like, obviously, after season five, everything starts to kind of become just like new content, not based on anything. But the writer of the novels had somewhat of a say. I know you mentioned he gave like a list of like bullet points to like kind of guide the writers for the show. So I think that I would, I mean, I would like to believe that it, the writer for the novels intended on Jon Snow coming back at some point. I also would just also like to think that it would have happened in a different fashion, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't hate Jon Snow coming back. He was my favorite character. I'm happy he came back, but ultimately I just think that the, the idea of someone dying and coming back to life had been absent from the show to that point, a major character doing it at least. And then once a major character did it, the stakes were so lessened. <laughs> I'm going to actually contradict you on that. Um, characters have come back from the dead. Um, I, I can't remember his name for the life of me right now, but there's that one guy. Um, he was at the, 
he died during um the long night he had the eye patch he, he had died like five times beforehand you know what i'm talking right, about but- yeah, I know who you're talking about, but I'm saying the main core characters. Like, oh, when Rob yeah, Stark yeah. died, he's dead. When Ned Stark died, he died. But Jon Snow dies, and he comes back to life. And I think that's where the stakes, again, that's when you saw plot armor start to take over. was after that moment. Because there was no plot armor for any of the major characters for the first four seasons, right? Like, you could see Danny or John or Rob and Ned as great examples. You could see any of them dying at any point. Joffrey as well. But once that happened to Jon Snow... All of the main characters were pretty much safe and unscathed from all attempts on their life until the very end. Then in the final episodes, they're like, okay, let's kill off all these main characters who have escaped death, you know, for the umpteenth time. Now let's kill them off. But that that was the moment where they introduced plot armor to the show. And that's when the stakes were lessened. And overall, I just think that the show had suffered in quality because of that moment right there. Again, love Jon Snow. Battle of the Bastards happens after that moment. And I love the Battle of the Bastards. And I love the show in general, but that moment I just think had major negative ramifications on the show. Yeah, I agree. I think the Battle of the Bastards was like the climax of the show where I know you hate season seven. I, I personally enjoyed season seven. And um, again, it's it, I think it's it's because of the way that I watched it. You know, it's slower paced. Not that many things happen. It's just a lot of like dialogue and like pl- setting up what is meant to be a grand finale. Um, but you know, I, I'm new to the show. I watched it on HBO Max. I pretty much binged it in like two sittings. So for me personally, just the style, the way I watched it, I didn't mind it. I thought it was really cool to see all these like characters meeting each other for the first time and interacting in different ways. I think one of my favorite episodes of the show, which I don't know how the fandom is, um, it, I feel like it might be underrated, is that one episode where they go north of the wall and it's like the most ragtag group of characters. It's like John Jorah, the hound um, Gendry is there. It's like, it's like the most random group of characters, like just teaming up. And I, I thought that was so cool to see them just like beyond the wall, just like killing zombie bears and fighting against the army of the dead. But then again, it also has its problems where it's like, they were walking for like days and days and days. But then as soon as they get attacked, they're like, Gendry, you're the fastest. Go send for Danny. And then he gets back to the wall in like 20 minutes. And then Danny just appears with her dragons. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, it's just like, it's good. It's, it's like, it's good content if it wasn't Game of Thrones, you know? Because Game of Thrones is very like peculiar about attention to detail. Everything has right. to make sense. But then once you hit season seven, Again, it, like, it just feels like a Marvel movie where it's just like things just happen for the purpose of like drama. Like, it, like, did I enjoy watching The Red Wedding? No, that was like one of like the worst experiences of my life. But like from like a political war standpoint and Game of Thrones and the Seven Kingdoms, like it made sense why they did that, you know, take out the king. But then like season seven, it's just like everyone's a hero let's just like go fight the bad guys and like, like i don't know it's just like it became like too cliche yeah and again i just think the plot armor aspect of it is what what it comes down to i just think they had their fan favorite characters and they got too afraid to kill them off you know at the beginning of the show when the books were dictating what was happening these characters had to die off but once they were left to their own vices and able to freestyle with the characters they didn't want to kill certain characters off because they knew the fans love them and and they didn't have to kill them off because the books didn't tell them to because the books hadn't gotten to that point anymore. So yeah. again, George R.R. R. Martin, I don't know if he's ever going to finish those freaking books, probably in like 30 years if he's still alive, but... I heard he's working on the sixth one still. He's on it, but he's been saying that for like a decade at this point. I yeah, mean, I mean, I don't know. I'm new. <laughs> it's been a while. I haven't read them. I, I, I know comparisons from what I've read online about them and then the show... But ultimately, love the show. One of the best shows ever, but it really does fall flat in the ending. I'd say season eight for me, if I had to rate season eight, which I'm about to do, I'd give it a 5.8. But the show overall, I'd give a 9.2. And then this popcorn M&M infused thing that I spilled all over the floor, I would give that an 8.2. It was lovely, delicious, savory and sweet. That's my favorite. So those are my ratings. Eric, Um, take it away. 
when it when it comes to season eight, you know, it's like whatever number I say right now, it's it's going to change like soon. You know, like I finished the show like three days ago. It's still fresh in my mind. And when I first watched it, I was like really, really mad, especially about Bran being the king. Because I'm like, why, why Bran? Like, he, it shouldn't be Bran. So I was really upset about that. But then, like, the more that I think about it, you know, you look at that final scene where you see like Bran as the king, and then like the council, like the small council members, and I look at them and I'm like, I wouldn't really want any of them to be king either. I like I don't think there is like a way that it could end properly in which I would be satisfied that I could think of at this very moment. And like that's just because of bad writing, you know, like all the characters and that like I would have enjoyed being on the throne were just ruined. Um so because of that, I guess right now season eight as a whole. What did you give it? What did I say? 5.8, I think. I think I went with 5.8. I'm going to go 4.9. Okay. For season Pretty, eight. A lot lower than me. Yeah. I, I didn't like the ending. Um, at, at The show as a whole, I, I, I every part of me wants to give it like a 10 out of 10, but I, I can't ignore season eight in the ending so i'm probably just gonna match you and go a 9.2 i'll give it a 9.3 only because i really actually did like the long night as as much as it has its problems i think that it was a very good episode just not for game of thrones i think it was good content just not for this universe so i'll give it a 9.3 um as for what i'm eating and drink i don't know eating and i'm drinking um i finished this this is like my go-to drink, 10 out of 10, obviously, um, <laughs> for the mango flavored. Not as good. Um, 8.4. Okay. 8.4. I think that's valid. It's probably a little high for my liking. I don't like mango. But again, I'm going to have a really, really fun time right now picking up all of the M&Ms and popcorn off of the floor since I spilled those within 10 seconds of hitting record for this episode. But again, I got to grab my popcorn off the floor. But the popcorn was pretty good this time. Hopefully, it'll be even better next time. We will continue to search for the perfect popcorn. One day, we will find a 10, and then the world will explode upon itself. But until that time, we will continue to talk about movies, TV shows, comic books, everything in between right here on Grab Your Popcorn. So... Grab your popcorn and join us next time and tell us what you want us to review next time and subscribe, do all that fun stuff. But again, have a good one.